We now come to the final part of this reading, which is trade organizations. Here you need to know a little bit about each of these three major organizations, the IMF, the World Bank, and the World Trade Organization. I have tried to reproduce the most important aspects on these slides. The IMF stands ready to lend foreign currencies to member countries to assist them during periods of significant external deficits. A pool of gold and currencies contributed by members provides the IMF with the resources required for these lending operations. So that is the high level function of the IMF. This also describes how the IMF gets its funding. The IMF provides a forum for cooperation on international monetary problems, facilitates the growth of international trade and promotes employment, economic growth and poverty reduction. You will notice that the World Bank also deals with poverty reduction. With the World Bank, that is a major objective. Here you can think of it as a secondary objective. The IMF supports exchange rate stability and an open system of international payments. The IMF lends foreign exchange to members when needed on a temporary basis and under adequate safeguards to help them address balance of payment problems. After the recent 2007-2008 crisis, the role of the IMF became even more important because if you read this carefully, an objective built in here is that the IMF tries to create stability in the global financial markets. So that can also be thought of as one of the roles of the IMF. Next we come to the World Bank or the World Bank Group. The main objective is to help developing countries fight poverty and enhance environmentally sound economic growth. The World Bank has two closely affiliated entities. One is the International Bank for Reconstruction and Development, which is also called IBRD. And the other is the International Development Association or IDA. These entities provide low interest or no interest loans and grants to countries that have unfavorable or no access to international or no access to international credit markets if these entities were to try if these countries were to try and raise money the cost would be extremely high the world bank on the other hand has a very sound credit rating given its policies so it can raise money at a relatively low rate and then lend that money out to these countries. The World Bank also provides analysis, advice and information to its member countries. And finally, the World Trade Organization. The World Trade Organization or WTO is the only organization that regulates cross-border trade relationships among nations on a global scale. The most important functions of the WTO include the following implementation, administration and operation of individual agreements, acting as a platform for negotiations and dispute resolution. WTO agreements have been signed by a large majority of the world's trading nations. The WTO has the mandate to review and propagate its members trading policies and ensure the coherence and transparency of trade policies through surveillance in a global policy setting. If you have time, go over example 13, but when you look at the practice problems at the end of the reading, you will notice that you will be given a particular function and then you will be asked which of the three organizations fulfills that function. In other words, if you understand the main points from the three slides that I have just shown you, you should be in good shape in terms of addressing the sorts of questions that you get. Obviously, if you want to get into more detail, you can go ahead and read these sections from the curriculum. Let's summarize now what we have learned in this reading. 
benefits and costs of international trade this is important and testable what this is saying is that in general there is a benefit of trading and that's why over the last few decades the amount of trade has gone up the benefit of trade doesn't mean that every single entity or stakeholder benefits what this means is that overall there is a benefit now how do we measure the benefit the benefit to a given country can either be in the form of exporting goods at a higher price relative to the price that would be received by selling internally and or importing goods at a lower price relative to the price of producing internally you need to understand the distinction between absolute advantage and comparative advantage with comparative advantage we are saying that if a country has a lower opportunity cost relative to its trading partner then it should trade absolute advantage looks at the fact that a given country has a lower cost or more efficient production and then it should trade so the key point is with comparative advantage we look at the opportunity cost you need to learn the points that i have made related to the ricardian and hecksher olin models with the ricardian model we assume that labor is the only variable factor of production whereas over here we assume that both labor and capital are variable we then talked about trade restrictions and capital restrictions with trade restrictions we talked about tariffs quotas export subsidies and voluntary export restrictions i would strongly encourage you to go over the summary panels that i showed you from the curriculum i believe that almost everything that you need to know related to this topic is covered in those panels and also make sure you are on top of the examples from the curriculum then with regional trade agreements we talked about the range of agreements the most basic sort of an agreement is a free trade zone or free trade agreement and then at the other end of the spectrum we had a monetary union and if you recall we then learnt about the three categories in the middle with a free trade agreement the members trade with each other without any restrictions but every entity can have its own rules with other countries the next level is a customs union where the countries or the members say that they will have the same policies and rules with non member countries and then the middle category was cm or a common market here we said that in addition to goods and services even factors of production such as labor can freely move between countries then we came to an economic union where the members create common institutions to manage their economy and finally we have a monetary union such as the eurozone balance of payments here it is critical to recognize the three major components the current account the financial account and the capital account and then the major sub components within each of these three accounts there was this one slide where i talked about the impact of consumer business and government decisions on the current account remember that major relationship that i showed you if you know that relationship then generally you should be able to answer the sorts of questions that might show up on this topic and finally imf world bank and wto know the basics about each of these organizations that is it as always go over the curriculum summary review the learning objectives do the examples especially the ones that i have highlighted some of the examples are fairly long winded if you have time read those but definitely do the ones where we have short questions do all the practice problems as always this is a must and if you have time do practice questions from other sources as well